I've been coming to Singapore since um, 2000. Um, so it's kind of my second home, so always happy to be back. Um, today we want to talk a little bit about um, the emotional side of uh, creativity. Um, how creativity can possibly provoke emotions, memories, and uh, I would like to talk a little bit about um, the world of hospitality because that's the, the field that I focus um, predominantly on. Um, for me, hospitality has, or design has, has kind of a few key um, layers. Um, and when I express design, I try to um, focus on a few key elements, uh, one of which is um, the sense of journey. The other is how we can define, find luxury, but in a modern kind of contemporary context. So I use the word relaxed luxury. Um, and then in terms of the experience itself, um, how you can go a little bit deeper uh, than the superficial uh, visual quality of experience and go into experiences that are a little bit more crafted. And lastly, it's the artisanal quality of design. Um, and I'm going to express it through some of the products that I have um, kind of challenged myself with. So I'll start off with the journey. Um, and I'll start off with probably the project that I'm most uh, recognized for, um, a project that's very close to my heart, uh, the Upper House Hotel in Hong Kong. Um, I was asked to do this project um, three years after I've graduated uh, from Cambridge. And um, at the time, I had a studio of three staff, um, nerve-wracking experience. Uh, but what's interesting is, uh, with an amazing client, we're able to challenge the whole idea of hospitality. Um, we have taken away um, the formal reception of the hotel when you arrive, because the hotel has only got 133 rooms. Uh, you arrive and you are checked in uh, digitally with an iPad. The hotel doesn't have a lobby. Um, instead, it's all about creating small, intimate spaces. So you go from the arrival point up an escalator to a transient lobby, and you reach up to this particular image, uh, which is the lawn. And again, we dedicated a large part of it to the sense of journey, uh, to go up these steps and reaching up to a small lawn that's nestled at the top of the space. Um, art is another part of the journey. Um, we have Man Fung Yi here, a Hong Kong artist. Throughout the hotel, we have about over 300 pieces of artwork. And then the room itself is the true destination within the hotel. Um, instead of giving all the spaces to the lobby, to the corridor, we've given them to the guest. So for each guest, the smallest room starts at 730 square foot, which is typically um, two hotel rooms. Uh, one of which is the bedroom, and then the other one is the bathroom. So here you have the bathroom, the ritual of bathing uh, being celebrated in an island top, clad in limestone, uh, with a sculpture set in front of a backdrop of Hong Kong's panoramic view. And talking about moments, talking about journey, uh, when you reach up to the top of the hotel is the umbrella feature. Uh, the most aspirational moment within this journey uh, under a skylight that we have created, below which is a bridge that connects between Cafe Grey, the only restaurant in the hotel, and the Sky Lounge. This is the Sky Lounge, and it's really a place where everybody goes to um, to get themselves checked out or get themselves booked into trips, um, reservations made, uh, read a book, or nestled um, by the fire. And lastly, uh, Cafe Grey, with this panoramic view of Hong Kong um, set as this kind of ultimate moment within the upper house. Um, journey uh, at Kyoku in Seoul, uh, one of my more recent uh, restaurant projects. Um, this project is very interesting because we have this really dramatic space. Um, it's seven meters high, higher than this marquee. Uh, no windows except for a line of skylights in the ceiling. And what I have um, come up with is the idea of a bamboo theater 
almost I call it a modernist uh, bamboo theater, uh, which is layered in terms of the sense of arrival. So you pretty much come up, arrive from the bar, you go down the staircase, you walk down the steps, and you arrive at this double height space. And what's really interesting for me also is the silhouettes that it portrays, the, the leaf, um, this um, artwork that we have commissioned. Actually, it's a line of artwork. So you start off at the top with this plinth. At the top is this maple leaf that appears to float. It kind of, kind of lifts off from the plinth, and it drops down uh, onto this um, low platform. And then eventually, it got lifted up towards the end and up the staircase. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about dealing with these kind of really kind of dramatic volumes. And what's important is to keep the lighting very low level and keep them uh, really intimate. Um, on the subject of relaxed luxury, uh, I will kind of shift ourselves out to London, uh, where we have worked um, at a very prestigious uh, address, uh, the Barclay Hotel, um, at one of the largest suites within the hotel group, the Maybourne, uh, which uh, owns the Claridge's and the Cornot and the Barclay. And this is the largest suite in the group. And uh, typically, when you think of England, that kind of royalness, that kind of classic nature of kind of these super uber luxurious suites, you would imagine that we would be creating something with tassels, with lots of draperies. But instead, we wanted a very modern room that kind of celebrates the context of the project, which is Knightsbridge. Uh, we deliberately uh, create that sense of relaxed luxury uh, with a lot of artwork. This is a Belgian artist, uh, Christian Cadali. And what's fundamental to the project is that we have divided the space into a series of pockets, be it the living room or behind the screen, we have a small area for the TV, and on the far end is the dining room. And we also think about um, what it means to be in a space. A space is not purely, kind of luxury is not about creating an image. It's not about creating something for people to look at and admire from a distance. It's to be in it, um, to immerse yourself in an, in, in, in an experience. So we thought that what's more relevant to the life that we lead now than to have your own kitchen in the suite. This, in particular, is a very special kitchen uh, because we have used um, 100 mil thick Turkish onyx uh, for the countertop. A close-up at the TV area, the study room leading to the bedroom, more artwork, the bedroom itself with all the bespoke furnishing, and lastly, the bathroom, which for me is the highlight of this room because historically, when you have an island top, it's always nice to have a little cushion uh, to rest your head on. But instead of a cushion, we have a marble cushion. So we carved um, this kind of organically shaped uh, cushion for the head with a slab. And that, for me, pretty much summarizes the Opus Suite. In terms of crafted experiences, um, this is again, we return to the upper house, and I've kind of challenged myself with a small pop-up project. Um, and we created a Christmas tree for the upper house last year. It's made up with 80 uh, planks of wood, all stained individually, uh, from dark orange uh, all the way down to an olive green. And together with that, uh, we've created a small pop-up space, again with graphics, collaterals, products that ties in with it, as well as a perfume that I have done with an Argentinian perfumer, uh, Fugia. And a Christmas card that we have done. Another crafted experience is another pop-up that we did uh, for Louis Vuitton. And this is a very interesting project because the project has the duration of six weeks. And 
at the time, it, this was about two and a half years ago. It was when Nick Lejeskier was first appointed as the creative director for Vuitton's fashion collection, a female uh, fashion uh, department. And we took his collection, we took the entire palette, and we translated it into an immersive space uh, where um, the brand actually invites some of their close friends and asks these close friends to host their own dinner parties in the space. And the reason why I call it immersive is because the products itself are actually scattered throughout the space. But it's not forcing you to look at them, but they're around you. And in some ways, I, I got to kind of experience retail design in a very kind of hospitality way. And what's intriguing is when people are in that kind of dine and wine environment, and when they're surrounded by all these products, naturally, they will gravitate to talk about the brand's heritage, the brand's history, and what it's trying to do for the future. And last but not least, there is a small boudoir with the fashion collection. And actually, after dinner, a lot of girls migrate in and try to do dress up and start to Instagram, so it's quite a fun moment. Artisanal, um, I will come to uh, my little brand, and I will talk a little bit about Las Vite, a collection of lights uh, that we did with them, uh, called Tactile. Uh, we started off with a single element, uh, with a glass tile. It's inspired by um, kind of, I was looking at glass and was questioning myself what I can do with it. And what's interesting is when you think of the glass block in Maison de Verre, I mean, that, that as the kind of the epitome of, of glass expression as a building material, I thought, why not do a tile and make it into a series of lights uh, that are horizontal and vertical at the same time? Um, and that was in Salone last year where we showcased it. So I have a one minute video that I'm gonna to show to um, share this. The idea of tactile collection is really about questioning uh, the materiality of glass. The feeling of touching tactile is a very important part of the project. The feeling of running your fingers uh, on the glass, um, just as the experience that I had in Prague, in the factory, in the workshop, um, and running my hand on the molds and really feeling uh, the, the texture of the molds. And that's a memory that I want to uh, infuse uh, into this particular glass collection. Speaking of experiences, speaking of emotions, I think not only space can communicate emotions, uh, products can probably express emotions as well. So um, in two days' time um, in Shanghai, I'm going to be launching a new carpet collection um, called Cinematic uh, with Taiping. Um, a very interesting collection because it's something that I hope will pay homage um, to the international urban landscape. And there are three thematics that runs within the collection, the sensory dust, the immersive sunset, and the urban skyfall, nightfall. Um, we were really looking at the silhouettes or the memories of the city and kind of express them into actually 11 designs, uh, altogether 45 pieces of carpets, um, um, to express um, the silhouettes of what it's like to be in an urban environment. So I'll run through them rather quickly. A lot of silhouettes about reflections, glass, urban grids, and all that. Last but not least, um, hospitality going forward. 
I'm going to. Um, I'm very proud and excited that this year uh, I'll be sharing four projects um, with all of you. Um, some of which are almost ready, some of which are about to open, and some of which will open end of the year. So there is Provence with Villa Lacoste, Hong Kong Kerry Hotel, Bangkok Wardoff, and Singapore Andas. And just to kind of whiz through them, Villa Lacoste. A beautiful vineyard in Provence, nestled at the top of the hills of the Lubron Valley, um, is, is the hotel, a 28-room hotel, uh, with an amazing collection of artwork. But what we've crafted is a private, very intimate space with the library as you go in, going into the salon, the first restaurant of the space, and then eventually coming to um, the pavilion uh, Louison, because we have hung um, a Louis Bourgeois sculpture um, in the middle of this glass house dining room. There is also the spa that's in the making and hopefully will be open in May. The second project is Kerry Hotel, a brand new project that I've worked on, probably the largest project that I've worked on ever. Um, it's a hotel that boosts over 500 rooms, uh, a ballroom that can seat over 112 tables. So it's, it's almost like a convention size. And what we have done is to create, it's, it's a business hotel, it's a, it's a mice uh, kind of convention, I mean, large scale hotel. But we can still instill a very strong lifestyle quality to it. And what's interesting to me is the individual spaces, um, the general sense of journey forward um, as you move from one space to the other uh, or um, perpetuate the sense of soft, quiet quality. And I enjoy this challenge, and I think it's something that's very different uh, from some of the projects that I've done, which are of a smaller scale, and I thought that uh, with a bigger scale project, we can also do this. So to wrap this up, I think um, the work that we do, the creativity that we embark ourselves on kind of doing is not really about imposing uh, a particular lifestyle, but you know, it happens when emotions, lifestyle comes from within. So thank you. On to the second. Yes.